Uh, you know, we actually came out of the game pretty clean, so we'll have some guys that hope, we're hopeful to get back uh, coming off the bye. Uh, but, you know, all in all, we're pretty clean coming out of that game. So, and hopefully when we get back to work here, come off the bye, we'll be a little bit healthier uh, with Elijah and Juma. Chance to get Matt Hennessy back, uh, Jalen Dalton. So, it should be, hopefully be a, a good thing for us. So, Hennessy's a guy you will work out. Absolutely, if he's ready. As far as the quarterback situation goes? We're yeah, we're still working it. through that. Mike, obviously, um, you know, I think Bassey tells me I talk in a week from today, and every change, especially if it goes in regards to personnel, I'll be transparent and we'll have decisions made. Um, you know, like today, you, you know, I'm sure the next question is going to be about the quarterback. Marcus isn't even in the building today. His wife went in labor this morning. Okay. So uh, he's in. Congrats to him. Hopefully, uh, they haven't had the baby yet, but uh, it'll be his first child. So, there's things like that that come up, Mike, and we'll have some very intense meetings in the next couple of days. Uh, we're, obviously, I know where we're at, and uh, we understand, too. Been in some close games lately. We need to get back over the hump. There will be changes made, um, and I'll, you know, anything we decide to do, I'll be as transparent as possible. And I will be with anything personnel wise, not schematically, but next Monday. Does Tampa Bay over the next two weeks or what they do in your position with them in regards to the division factor into the decision? No, I think where we're at, and that's a good question, but you know, we, we've got we've got to get over this hump here and there's a lot of things that at stake. Um, so that that will not have an impact. It's what's gonna be best for this team short term and long term. When you when you're talking about decision making, right? Like mm -hmm. what and you have tough conversations and hard conversations. Can you, I know you said when I asked it yesterday that it was just coming off of a game. Sure. What goes into this decision whether or not to make the change of quarterback? Well, that's right? just at every position, Mike. You know, whether you're making a call at left guard or anywhere else on the field, um, a lot of things. I mean, you want to be, what you don't want is have a knee jerk reaction, which I don't think after 13 games that you are. I think, and you know, what we try to do every Monday is, is be objective and tell the truth in, in the meetings. There's a way to do that without, uh, you know, taking shots at anybody's dignity or whatever. We'll never do that. It's called coaching, you know, and being objective and correcting things and starting with myself. I mean, you got to hold yourself accountable first. So that's it, where you're not trying to, because you're upset the way the game went, just making a knee jerk reaction. We're at a point in the season where we've got a lot of, a lot of things to look through and we keep up with week after week. And so, um, like I said, we're in a new spot. You have a quarter of the season left, and we have the late buys, the latest buy I've been a part of. How much does that maybe play into? I know, it was, I guess it was the last time we went round and round with quarterback questions, you had said that at this time, the way it is now, well, the buy doesn't necessarily matter. But well, I mean, it? there's a lot of ways to look at it. I mean, hell, if you got to do it, I mean, whether, you know, it's any position, I mean, you're, anybody that's up on game is a play away, so you got to be able to adapt. It's not like you say you only, you have to have – you're going to change, uh, you know, you're starting whatever tackle guard or center you need, you know, a week or two. That's not, I mean, that's not reality. But if you're coming off that short stint we had with the Chargers and, and Carolina, and there's a lot of things that went wrong, um, you don't want to look like you're just blaming one person. Again, if you think it's the best thing for you at that moment, yeah, we're going to do that. That's what you're paid to do. But our circumstances are very different today than they were a couple of weeks ago. For different reasons, yeah. not just football, but it's a reality of our situation. I know I'm talking about quarterback here, but what has Marcus done in your eyes to potentially, like you said, you're having tough conversations. What has he has done potentially to keep the job? Well, uh, again, how you frame these questions is on this topic. There's a lot of things and a lot of spots that we need to do better, Mike, to, again, say close all day, but we need to get back into that win column. And, um, you know, there's certain a lot of good things that, there are some things that are trending in the right direction that give you a chance every week, but there's certain things we need to enhance, and we will. I'll flip on the other side of the quarterback ledger. Just some numbers here. For the second straight week, you rushed for over 150 yards against a top rush defense. Yeah. You had seven drives yesterday, not including the very last one when it was you know near next to impossible to score. You scored on four of those seven drives. The three drives you didn't score on, you either had a false start or a holding penalty. Now that to me doesn't seem like it adds up to a quarterback problem per sure. se. Um, you know, but there are execution things in there that you know, are tied to the quarterback. So what do you make of all that? When everything, that looks really positive altogether. Sure. 
How do you yeah. parse it as to why you can't get a win out of that? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. A lot to unpack. Kind of goes back to why, you know, talking about blaming one person a couple weeks ago. There's things that are trending. We've been in some low possession games for a lot of reasons, right? Time of possession, we've now held some people to low scoring. We need to get into the red zone more. You know, I think the thing, you're never going to be really good if you're in a lot of third and longs. Uh, certainly need to be better than what we've been the last five weeks. We've been in too many. Some of them maybe had a hold here, gotten off track. Uh, I thought we've protected pretty well for the most part against some pretty good fronts. But when you get off schedule, those third and nine pluses are hard to convert. Pretty damn good when you're we're in reasonable situations there. So when you get into those metrics, you're right. But again, you're going to need to get more than 20 points. And so if you get more possessions, again, we can be a little bit cleaner, extending some of those drives, getting down to the red zone more. That'll, that'll get us over the top. You're looking at it from offensively. Defensively, same thing. Being able to get off the field in a more timely manner. We're doing a decent job in the red zone, forcing people to kick field goals. But we need more possessions. We need to be play cleaner in all three phases. You surprised about the penalties and a little bit sloppier than normal? We had six. Um, you know, the ones that drive you nuts at the pre-snap. We haven't had that all year. So we had the one delay a game. We had the two procedure penalties. Um, Right, then you had the one, the hold on Felipe, the hold on Hesse, and then I'm missing one uh, of oh, the horse collar. Yeah. So we've been pretty damn good with the penalties. The ones that you can control, the pre-snap ones, those are the ones that frustrate you more than anything. The other ones, penalties of aggression, we got to look at it. What happened? What can we do technique-wise to coach off this? How can we be cleaner there? For sure. All right, we're not teaching anybody to horse collar. Uh, you know, on with Hesse, the ball, ball gets bounced, guys outside. There's a timing thing where you're going to have to let go, clearly. Um, so those are things, again, six of them in a low possession game, the ones that happen on offense, yeah, they hurt us. I know we talk about that offense, but defensively, what are, are there things that can, Absolutely. That, that can be changed in the short term versus Absolutely. it being a more of a global thing? I love the global term. You any more uh, good <laughs> uh, corporate jargon you can work in there? Intentional. <laughs> You can make things Google intentional. Fred, Fred, and, you know, so. No, it's not that. I mean, they're just people like to throw that jargon out there. I love the uh, global reference. But in all seriousness, uh, there's a lot of little things. I mean, obviously we've we have adapted. Uh, we, we gave up, you know, some explosives kind of in the middle part of the season. There's a give and take. There's some things that I think we can do a little bit cleaner situationally as well. You know, you get into these games. Like I said we're living in these high pressure, which is which is good. But we got to get back over the hump there and the, there's some schematic things that we'll, we'll look to tweak Mike that I won't really go into detail and maybe a couple personnel things too. Yeah. How much of that goes to specifically maybe pass rush because that's an area that, that the last two seasons has sure. been pretty you know and you know we've there been some games have been okay and there's been other ones that been pretty pedestrian and for some of it uh, it'll never change you got to be in sync so I get the you know, whether you're setting up games or pressures, you may need to get them to hold it an extra half a second, which will cause an effect. And other ones, you got to win some one on ones, and we got to find ways and keep adapting. We got to get be creative, and that's what we have to do. But it, there is a give. It is coordinated. So if you know a guy's off here and you know given too much cushion, the ball's coming out quicker than you anticipate. So those are the little things, and that's the art of coaching that we we got to continue to to work on. Just such small sample size as I don't know, but the way you all played against Justin Fields when you really didn't pressure at all, you got more pressure. You didn't blitz at all. You seemed like you got a lot more pressure. Was that just a factor maybe facing a guy like Justin Fields, or is there something that can get drawn from that? Well, I think every, every game's unique. You know, what you need to try to stop, right? What does a team do well? What are you trying to neutralize? What are you trying to attack? What are you really trying to hide yourself? Right, that's the art of it, you know, like neutralize their, trying to neutralize their strengths, maybe protect some of your, what you feel are some mismatches or weaknesses, where you would exploit. That's, that's, so every week's a different challenge in that regard. There's certain things that carry over that I think we have in certain spots. Um, certainly I've been pleased with the offensive line and the intent, um, some of the things that we've done there that we, so that can maybe carry over week to week, even though we're attacking a different scheme, but the, confidence in the production week over week. Um, you know, when you're playing different offenses, different quarterbacks, different schemes, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. But certainly there's 
things that we need to improve, and that's what we'll work to do. You always focus on you guys and what you can control. I, I don't know. I mean, do you spend time, you know, as far as where you are in the standings talking to you guys? Are, are, are playoffs still in your mind frame right now, or is it just you know, week to week with everything? It's a hard balance because you're obviously aware of it. We don't right. live on you – know, if you can say, you know, unless you, like, literally, like, don't have – yeah, don't have a phone, <laughs> whether you want to look at it or not, if you even forget what alerts you pop up, you're like, damn. Uh, so, yeah, you're aware of it. Uh, you know, we're aware of it. Everything that goes into it, like the schedule, Mike brought up walking in here about whether we're going to play on Saturday or Sunday, and obviously we would adapt. You start focusing on that, we need to get a win. So, you know, whatever we got to do, we got to find a way to try to beat New Orleans down there. I know, again, we focus a lot on quarterback, but how have you felt about the play of Drew Donovan this year in terms of what yeah. he's been able to give you sure. and also some of the snapping? Right. You know, obviously um, – you know, those are those are obvious to the to anybody watching, but I think Drew's done a, a pretty damn good job for a guy that's going through his first year at center. I think he's got a good command. He's got some strength. Um, you know, sometimes with the way we play, when you're running certain schemes, you know, everybody's got it. Depending on the play call and whatever, somebody's going to have a harder job than others. Um, but I think overall, Drew's done a pretty good job with command for a young player in there that we 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 feel pretty confident in Drew. Ever really been a snapper ever? Yeah. Is there something when you're at pistol versus shotgun that can no. ver, that can be that's a, that's the same snap. Okay. I think what happens sometimes too, it may be, again speaking, you know, my own experience sometimes, it, certain things, certain directions, that where maybe it's a certain assignment or a matchup. Sometimes guys can get anxious because you're you got a pretty damn good guy. It depends on what they're doing over here. Well, you may not get help initially, and you're. Well, I've got Derek Brown one on one. I mean, that can be a challenge. But your job as a pro is to make the hard look easy. That's why you're you're a pro. You know, otherwise everybody would be out there. Um, so, you know, those things we continue to work on. Obviously, again, the things you need to clean up that are pretty obvious. There's some other little things that uh, you know maybe behind the scenes, if may not be his fault. Maybe you know we should have because of the pressure. Maybe if you fly out of there, it puts a little more strain on him. So. It's got to be coordinated, uh, but we're pleased with his progress. Uh, but, you know, we'll continue to work that. Uh, I mean, just in terms of Desmond, from week one until the really last time that anyone see him throw yeah. a ball publicly to now, where has that growth been for him that, that we haven't maybe been able to see? Yeah, I mean, you haven't seen it because he hasn't been out there. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. No, I, know, I don't mind the question at all, but, you know, it's kind of a – yeah, obviously. Um, yeah, there's things that we've tried to do with all of our young players, things that we we do behind the scenes that we add into practices. Uh, they understand even intentionally. Sometimes they don't even understand unintentionally some of the things we do to try to to try to make it hard on them to see where their progress is at. So with with a lot of our young guys, we're pretty damn good about where they are. We think that there's a lot of guys that you may have seen or really haven't seen yet because of depth that position or somebody's playing well in front of them, they've made some pretty good progress. Uh, ultimately, until they get out there and play, uh, then that'll be the, the, the real test. But we feel pretty confident in a lot of guys that we've been bringing along and things we've done practice-wise in our development program that uh, if we have to play them, we feel like they're more ready now than they may have, may have been in August. Is that harder to do with the quarterback specifically? I'm not going to get it. I think in any position, it's the speed of it, the speed and the consequences. I mean, there's a lot of guys you look good in practice playing DB, they'll jump routes, they'll play a little stickier, and then all of a sudden the real pressure of the game, if you're wrong, and the, the thought of giving up a touchdown, if you're wrong, that makes them play a little more passive. So they're saying, you see in practice, you feel pretty good about skill set development, and then all of a sudden you get in the game, and all of a sudden the guy's trying to, you know, three putt everything, and it's like, all right, you know, where was that aggression that we saw in practice? And well, because there's real consequences here. Uh, that happens a lot, too. But until we see him play, but we feel good about him, that would be the next test. Along those same lines, you know, because the quarterback has to process so much more mentally as much as physically all at the same time, you know, the lack of experience that Desmond has gotten at this point of live game stuff, I mean, you know, how far is the gap that he needs to bridge between what you see in practice and the consequences well, of the game? I think for any play, you know, you got to see him out there. But there's certain things, too. I mean, it, we've talked about this before here. 
And sometimes it may not be the perfect answer, but if you feel somebody's not ready right away, um, you know, that could be a detriment to their career. You throw somebody out there too early. Um, yeah, again, you've seen it. There's a ton of examples of what about, you know, that's the best thing to go on in society today, the what about isms. But you try to do what you think is best for the player. And out of necessity, if you had to play somebody, I think you brought that up last week, Mike, we had to throw Jalen out there probably before, well, it was before we wanted to, to put him out there. We had to. Um, but you want to make sure you're bringing guys the right, right way. There's been guys that have gone out there maybe too early, and it probably altered their career. There's been other guys that you could make a real strong argument, maybe should have been out there a little bit earlier. So, yeah, I, I get that game. But th there is thought that goes into it. Um, again, you try to make the best decisions for the player and for the team. Uh, yeah, we're going to make, make a decision by Wednesday. Is it, has a decision been made at this point? Or? Uh, it's about 95%. So okay. <laughs> I'll have a whole thing. When, hopefully, D. Levy will be back here uh, a week from today. And, I mean, you uh, don't have to wait for D. No, but in all seriousness, there, anything we do, we got to make sure the next couple of days, and, and we will. And we'll have some tough meetings, and we'll go through it and make sure that we'll update you guys on anything that's personnel driven. Uh, obviously, scheme. There would be things we tweak. I won't get into that, but I'll be as transparent as you know, as you guys deserve, and everybody else, the fans, whatever. But uh, we got to get through the next, you know, 48 hours and, and make sure we make the right decisions. On the bye week, how much do you critique yourself and the rest of the coaching staff? A lot. I mean, we do every Monday, um, and I know sometimes it, you go through it, and then all of a sudden, you after I get done with this, and, and I, I get on there with Arch. I mean, you're on to the next. You know, so you get a chance to really step back and decompress for, you know, a day or two. And so, yeah, I mean, a little bit more. We, we hear from coaches a lot that this, you know, the NFL season has done multiple seasons combined in one, or you evolve and you kind of have these different mm -hmm. sections of the season. Obviously, the bye week kind of brings in that sure. kind of, you know, point. But um, th does this, do you have like a, a focal message or point of focus that you want to kind of carry from? the bye week forward to the end of the year? Well, obviously we need to – when we come back, I mean, we got a quarter of a season. We need to we need to improve and we need to go get us a, uh, a win, uh, starting with, you know, New Orleans, which will be a challenge going down to the Super Bowl, which will be fired up to um, go down there. I think you take it where you're at. And we've gone on a pretty good clip since late July. Uh, you get a little bit of a breather, but – Week one's coming up, you know, that goes Labor Day weekend. And then, you know, the Thursday game was pretty late for us and trying to get healthy when you got a young team, too. It's a long season for them. So, it's by being this, this late, you try to take it as advantage for guys to, to mentally and physically kind of recharge. So, when we come back in here, we got this sprint to the finish with four games left and a, and a whole quarter of a season. So, it's just you take it to where you're at, where you think you're at with your with your team and, and where, where it falls in the schedule. So you can't control that. We can control how we handle it, though. Uh, that's, you know, painfully obvious.